I watch a lot of Law and Order. That really is what marriage boils down to. Life is boring, okay? When you stop bullshitting out in the clubs and going everywhere and getting in fights, you gotta find someone you love being bored with. <laughs> and I wish you my kind of happiness, where on a Friday night you're laying in bed in your pajamas with like oatmeal cookies going, oh, it's a good Law and Order with Jerry Orbach. Yes, <laughs> yes, this is life. And it's beautiful, and I wish it for you. You may be going, don't wish that shit on me. I'm out partying, hoofing it. Leave me alone, slammy. <laughs> you ever see the Law and Order for, where Ice-T has to go undercover? There's, there's no segues in my show. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> and I don't really have an act. We're just gonna jump off a cliff together. We'll build our wings on the way down, if that's okay with you. I don't wanna structure this shit out too much. Let's just talk. And everything I tell you is true, okay? You ever see the Law & Order episode where Ice-T has to go undercover to break up a ring of gay black athletes? <laughs> yes? Yes! It's the strangest episode ever. It's like somehow like the star quarterback is having sex with like another team star running back and Sam Waterston's like, is that what we're doing, Your Honor? You know, Sam, and, <laughs> I think it's my first time doing Sam Waterston. Every time Sam Waterston, Jack McCoy would get upset, he'd wiggle his bangs at the judge, Your Honor? Is that what we're doing with the Constitution? <laughs> Blowing our noses with it and letting quarterbacks have butt sex with running backs, Your Honor? <laughs> so they send Ice-T, being the only black person on the show, to go undercover to break up the gay black athlete ring. I don't even know what the crime was, but I'm riveted. I'm glued to the TV. I gotta see how this plays out. Is Ice-T gonna wind up like blowing a guy? He's OG, original gangster. They're gonna wind up tricking for him? Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so like halfway through the show, they have all photos of like all pro athletes, football guys up on the big board in the squad room. And Ice-T just walks in with a floor length leather coat and he points to one of the guys, he goes, yeah, Jesse McDaniels, he's on the down low. <laughs> then he fucking leaves, he's done. Like, that's his undercover work for the episode. There's no recordings, there's no paperwork. He didn't take any photographs, he doesn't give it, he just walks in, he's on the down low. <laughs> I don't have an ending for that, it just popped into my head because <laughs> I was watching Law and Order. I have two boys, like I said, I got a baby, four and a half months old, I got an eight-year-old. My eight-year-old, maybe uh, a quarter gay, maybe. And if you have a child between the ages, a boy child between the ages of one and 13, he's a quarter gay too. Don't look at me like I just said some wacky <laughs> shit. Every boy is the gayest thing in the world until they turn that corner. A quarter gay, they are. And you know what? We all, I'm still a quarter gay. I swear to God, I did a movie with Keanu Reeves and Forrest Whitaker called Street Kings, okay? And Keanu Reeves, yeah, all right, yeah. Sure, like you saw it in the theater. Nice try. Listen. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is so beautiful, this guy took me out of my game. I sat between, t and he's not gay, you just wish he was gay, because your wife would fuck him in front of you, and it's true. <laughs> and so would I. I would fuck Keanu Reeves in front of you. I, don't, I wouldn't even care if you had a problem with it. I'd come to your house, I'd say, this, me, I think you know Keanu, and we would just come in. <laughs> and we would just do wonderful things to each other on your couch while watching Bravo. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is so handsome and gorgeous, he took me out of my game. We're literally between like takes three and four in the movie, and I'm just sitting in a chair, I was on a desk, I'm sitting on a desk in a squad room looking at Keanu, and I'm just thinking to myself, this motherfucker's beautiful. <laughs> I don't, he's like exotic, is he Hawaiian or? <laughs> I, I, he could be anything. He's just, look at his lips. He's action. What? <laughs> That's that quarter gay. It comes in all the time. Don't act like when you see pictures of Beckham with his shirt off, you're not like, who's this guy? <laughs> you know you do. Or you don't. Maybe it's just me. I don't care. You don't think your son's a quarter gay? I know he is. You know how I know? Because I coached at the league. I've seen every seven and eight year old in California run to first base, and they run like little men. 
because that's the part they've rehearsed over and over and over. The second you tell a seven or an eight-year-old, go to second base, go, the wheels fall off. <laughs> Their hat flies off, they go back and get it. I got an eight-year-old standing on second base, tucking his hair behind his ears. <laughs> get down on it. Get I'm like, how the fuck does he know the words to that song? <laughs> ever have a sleepover with your son's friends? That's the gayest shit that will ever happen in your house. You hear them all night long. You set up like a tent in your living room and you just <laughs> <laughs> They zip the windows of the tent closed. You come down and check on them. They're wearing each other's pajamas. <laughs> My son's wearing SpongeBob bottoms and a Lightning McQueen top. Neither of which he went to bed in. I put him to bed as a New York Jet. I put Wayne Krebet to bed, and all of a sudden he's got SpongeBob bottoms, Lightning McQueen top, and they're all mixed and matched. One kid's got no shirt on at all. He's outside the tent hustling. He just hopes company comes over. He wants to fucking party. Like a little Tracy Morgan. I was like, I'm gonna get everybody pregnant. <laughs> Where's your father? <laughs> get your father down here. We're gonna get everybody pregnant, boy pregnant. <laughs> they wake you up with very gay problems. <laughs> Daddy? Yeah? Tommy's punching us in the penis too hard. Tell Tommy, I said, knock it off. <laughs> okay, thanks, Dad. And he runs out of the room. I try to go back to bed, but I can't because as I'm laying there with my eyes closed, I can only think of two words. Too hard. <laughs> what do you mean, Tommy's punching us in the penis? Too hard. <laughs> you know, you know when you go camping with your buddies and you're punching each other in the dicks, having a good time? You know. You know when you're out with your pal, like you're driving, and you're halfway through, you know, Riverside, and you reach over, you just start punching him in his dick, just goofing off, and he reach over, starts punching you, and you, Tommy doesn't do it right. It's like, hey, Tommy, we get it, you're a top. Relax, okay, you're in charge. Tommy is ruining the sleepover because he's not punching us in the dicks the right way. I fall asleep anyway, because I don't care enough about their shenanigans to stay up. I don't know if you've ever been woken up by someone else's kid, but that will scare the shit out of you. <laughs> Cause whenever you look, your own kids will scare the shit out. Like when they come to you at four in the morning, like daddy, you're like, oh God! You grab them by the throat and you're like, oh, this is bad. You gotta put them to bed, give them like four Benadryl strips, tell them it was a horrible, that was a bad dream you had. Where daddy grabbed you by the throat. Benadryl is like Jägermeister to five-year-olds, in case you're wondering. <laughs> a mother's little helper. I hear Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore, and I look over and it's that kid with his fucking shirt off. He's standing next to my bed, Mr. Moore. And I'm like, hey, it ain't that kind of party, little man. And I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for Chris Hansen to walk out of my master bathroom. One of them is shame right over there. To catch a predator, that is the best show on television. It's a great show because they catch predators. But it's also a fascinating show to me because the two most important things Chris Hansen has to say is the word seat, because he tells each sex offender, have a seat over there, and he has to say the word sex, but neither one he can pronounce. He comes out and he goes, well, I have a shit right over there. <laughs> it sounded like you came here because you wanted to have sex. <laughs> and the child molester's like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying, sorry. 
Are you Tom Brokaw? Why do you talk like that? <laughs> Every guy in The Catch a Predator says the same thing. I'm here to save him. I came here on the internet, I was talking to him, he's 14, and I came, and then the cameras come out and they're like, no, 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 I'm here to save his life. He shouldn't be on the internet soliciting sex. And Chris Hansen's like, did you just bring the wine coolers? And he's like, yeah, I got them right here. But I said, listen, let's not get off track here. I'm here, did you bring your condoms? Yeah, yeah, they're right next to the wine coolers. But I came here to save his life. Where's that one psychopath predator? We know he's out there when Chris Hansen goes, why don't you have a sheet right over there? And the guy goes, are you his dad? You're cool with this? I came here to fuck a 14-year-old, are we good? <laughs> These cookies are amazing, by the way. I don't know if you know your son can bake. <laughs> oh, cameras? Holy shit, did I just hit the fetish jackpot? Are you out of your minds? <laughs> it seems like you came here for sex. Yeah, I want to fuck a 14-year-old. Where is he? What are you doing here? <laughs> no, they all wiggle their way out of it. I got way off track. <laughs> the kid goes, Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore, he's got no shirt on. I go, what is it? He goes, Jesse peed on us. <laughs> and I look, and this kid has a giant piss stain on his quad. <laughs> now, this isn't a tell him to knock it off problem. You gotta go down there and do some hands-on upper management work if you got kids peeing on each other, right? I go downstairs, all the kids are outside the tent, and they're acting like grown-ups, like, finally! Like, how you act, or I act, like when the IT guy is late coming to fix the computers in your office, like, oh, yeah, I didn't know between 9 and 5 meant 5.15. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. I'm covered in piss. Thanks for coming downstairs. <laughs> they're all outside the tent in their mix and matched pajamas, and they all have giant spots of piss on them. <laughs> Jesse's in the tent, in his own pajamas. He's sleeping like a baby. And they're pointing at him. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Jesse's family just moved from Long Island. I think his father's a legitimate businessman. <laughs> Jesse's 10. He's a little old for this crew. I pull him out by his feet, and on the little tent in the living room, it made a great sound, just pajamas on that fucking tent floor. <laughs> and Jesse stands up, and he comes up to, like, hear on me. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I go, Jesse, did you just pee on them? And Jesse goes, yeah. <laughs> like, this kid's ready to fucking throw, right? <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, don't back down, don't back down, be a man. Show them you're a man. I go, why did you pee on them? He goes, because I go to use the bathroom, and they all come in behind me, and they start tickling my back. I'm like, I don't want to hear the end of the story. <laughs> This is the gayest shit I've ever heard in my life. If you guys were covered in glitter, roller skating around the house, waving rainbow flags, that would be half as gay as what you just said. I hope my son is gay. I'll be honest with you right now. God bless him. I'd be so happy and proud that he was mine and my wife's and not some asshole family would try to yell and beat it out of him. I'll tell you one thing. If he's my son and he's gay, we're gonna have one rule. You're gonna come out of the closet early and you're gonna be real gay. <laughs> I don't want like you in a suit and glasses acting cool gay like Tim Gunn on runway. I want you in a fucking cape. <laughs> I want Hermes sneakers, Louis Vuitton backpack, roller skating to school with Anita Baker on the headphones. If you're gonna be gay, mean it. And I'll be like, that's my son! Look how gay he is! <laughs>